Hi folks, Mary here, and we are going to talk a little bit about how to use a planisphere. A uh, planisphere is one of the pieces of equipment you've been asked to purchase for this course. Um, it is a paper slide rule type device, and it's very useful for looking at comparative positions of constellations, um, for seeing diurnal motion of constellations and stars, and to kind of locate things in the night sky. Now the planisphere you've been asked to purchase is from 40 to 50 degrees north latitude. That's because that is where we live. We live in the northern half of the North American continent, or excuse me, of the United States. And so this one works very, very well. There are other types. This one is for 30 to 40 degrees latitude. And if you lived a little bit further south, let's say you lived um, Missouri, Oklahoma, um, even as far south as maybe Florida, Southern California, this one would be a little bit better. If you happen to get the 3040 instead of the 4050, do not stress about it. Both are going to be pretty darn close for our purposes. Now, this slide rule device can be useful for determining what the sky looks like on any particular day or time. Now you'll notice on the outside ring here, there are calendar dates, and you'll notice that there are times, uh, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., 1 a.m., midnight, 11, 10, 9 p.m., etc. And we set the day and the time in order to give us an accurate picture of the sky. So I am going to choose the spring or vernal equinox, which is right around March 20th. And we're going to do the vernal equinox and we're going to go to right around midnight. So I have this set for 12 midnight at March 20th, that spring or vernal equinox. Now, if I stood and looked north, what I would see in the northern horizon is I would see Cassiopeia, Cepheus, about 45 degrees up, I would see Polaris, our north star. And the grommet of the planisphere represents that north star or the um, zenith of the celestial sphere, the north celestial pole. If I go further up in the horizon, probably right about the top of my head, I would see Ursa Major and the asterism, the Big Dipper. If I went even past the top of my head and a little bit south, I would see these other constellations, for example, Virgo. Now, if I wanted to know what was on the eastern horizon on March 20th at midnight, what I would do is I would turn this so that east was now horizontal, and on the eastern horizon, a fucus would be coming up over the horizon. If I wanted to see what was on the western horizon, I would turn to the west, and I would look and see, hmm, who is that on the western horizon? So I am going to twirl this a little bit, and who is just setting in the west? And that would be our dear friend Orion, one of the most wonderful constellations that's out there. You can predict, use the planisphere to predict uh, what's going to happen if a constellation is going to rise or set. So for example, I had this set at March 20th at midnight. So let's go back to March 20th at midnight. And at that situation, Orion is just setting in this horizon, on, on the western horizon. Let's take a look at the little dog that's chasing Orion, his dog Canis Minor. And let's see as the night goes on if Canis Minor is going to be rising or setting. So I'm going to change this from March 20th at midnight to March 20th at 1 a.m. So I'm going to slide this. Whoops, make sure I slide it the right direction. 1 a.m., March 20th, what happened to Canis Minor? He's actually coming down towards the western horizon. If I go to 2 a.m. on March 20th, 2 a.m., March 20th, there is Canis Minor, and he is about to set. So you can see which constellations are setting, and if you go on that eastern horizon, you can see that Aquila is coming up. Now this is the north facing side of the planisphere. Let's take a look at the south facing side. If, and I'm gonna actually go back to March 20th at midnight, cause that's just nifty. Okay, so we've got this set again, midnight, March 20th, flip this guy over. 
if I was standing looking south, what would I see to the south? Well, I would see Hydra the water snake, big, very large constellation right there. Now, you'll notice there is a smaller piece of the sky, fraction of the sky. Um, it goes up about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees or so. And if I go further up the southern sky, uh, there's not an awful lot there. Virgo is a little bit off to the west, and Sextans is over here a little bit on the east. But if I wanted to know what was really high in the southern sky, I would actually turn it over, and that's where I would see that high southern sky. It would be right about there. Other things that the planisphere shows us that is really cool. If you look on the back side, there is a key of different shapes. Um, the cross is a globular cluster. The little dots is an open star cluster. The box is a nebula and ovals are galaxies. So if we turn this back to this side, let's see if we can find some of those. Um, da, ba, 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 ba. I'm going over by Gemini and M35, that's one of those Messier objects. The dark area here, that represents the Milky Way galaxy, and we are looking sideways through our Milky Way galaxy. Um, and you're probably going to spot them before me. There we go. There's M35. That happens to be a globular cluster and a Messier object. You'll notice that constellations have their names in capital letters, where individual stars, like Regulus in Leo, uh, individual stars are lowercase with the beginning capital. Sickle, that happens to be an asterism. That is a very visible thing that we can see in the sky, so that is noted. Other things you can find are the plane of the ecliptic. If you look at this dotted line, that plane of the ecliptic is the path that the sun appears to follow as we orbit it all year long. And along that, you are going to find the ecliptic constellation. So we have Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, um, here is Libra, as we go along that plane of the ecliptic. The other line that you might see is the celestial equator. So here's the celestial equator. And the celestial equator is an extension of the Earth's equator out into space. And that is right there. You can note um, right ascension and declination on planispheres. Uh, right ascension is given in hours. So this is 12 hours, 11, 10, 9, 8, seven, etc. And declination is angles from the celestial equator up towards the pole of the celestial sphere. So it starts at 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. And Polaris at the top of the celestial sphere would be at a 90 degrees declination. From our latitude, we can also see some things below the celestial equator, and that's why that says negative 10. So let's try and find the right ascension and declination of Leo. I would aim for the middle of the constellation. Leo has a right ascension. There's 12, there's 11, there's 10. I would aim for somewhere around 11 hours of right ascension and declination. Here's a 10, here's a 20. If I split the difference, I'd call that about a 15 degree declination. We will use the planisphere for many things in a variety of different labs, but hopefully this will help you find um, some dates and notice some of the information that is here. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.